Hello, 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 Cynthia. Hello, everybody. I see the hearts. I see everybody joining. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Manal33 is here. Hello, Valerie, to you. Excited to see everybody. And I know, I know, I don't know. Everybody knows. Andrea, good morning, beautiful. What an honor to wake up to your session. Andrea, so happy that you're here. Fantastic. I really love this topic. And you know, it's not the first time that we've done this topic. Christine, hello from Germany. Good evening, Sporty Jen. Hello, all of you. I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm excited too. Christine, a different Christine. I think they say their name same, but spell it one with a capital T and one with smaller case T. Christine, hello, Manal and all. I'll be working while I listen. Fantastic. And Rach, ah, this is Rachel, not Rochelle. This is Rachel, not Rochelle. Rachel, hello to you too. Hello, hello, Mo. Welcome, welcome. Really excited today to talk about manifestation. Manifestation. What did I say in the title? I called it attaining the life you desire or manifesting the life that you want, making the life that you, you, you desire, curating, being the curator of your dreams, being the actor, not the reactor. Rachel says yes, 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 because last time there was mind games with the name of Rachel and Rochelle with me. Let us Let's talk about manifestation. Let's talk about attainment. Let's talk about what our desires are. Good morning, Jen, to you. Good morning. So this is not a new topic, but every day and every inspiration is new and fresh and alive. We can talk about the same thing and have so much activity, inspiration, and love. And so today we are going to talk about desires. And naturally, naturally, by talking about desires, the question is, and I think I wrote it in my welcome, I said, so much fun exploring what our deepest desires are and what may be keeping you from your desires. Hint, hint, I gave a wonderful hint, the natural life's unfolding. So what is it that you desire? What is it that you desire? And what is keeping you from the desire? Actually, at the end of last inspiration, we were talking about that. We were talking about inspiration and doing the things that we love and what's keeping us from it. So it's so in line with what we ended up with. Andrea, I would like to manifest being retired and travel for the rest of my days and make a fool of myself every day. Andrea, I love it except for what your definition of fool is. If your definition of fool is how I live my life, yes, free-spirited, alive, from adventure, from inspiration, from truth, from expression that's authentic, from uninhibited, which means free and liberty. Andrea, fantastic. So is that right how I defined it? Being silly, happy, joyful, beautiful, 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 and Question, question, question. Elena, hello to you. And Cecilia, as well as you enter the virtual room. Andrea and everybody, what is keeping you from it? Should we go straight to it or do we want to talk about more about desires? What? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. What is keeping you from that? Angela, hello. And you all know it's the three, but what is keeping you, Andrea, from that manifestation? Because there are people that are living like that. There are people that are living retired and traveling and looking, going to wherever their hearts desire and living life from inspiration. What is it that's keeping you from that? Rachel, I need to manifest Fearlessness, fear is keeping me. Okay, Rachel, what is the opposite of fearlessness? What's the opposite? So, you know, step one is an awareness. So you said fear is keeping me. What's the opposite? Acknowledge, step two is always the acknowledgement of what is desired. What is desired? Andrea, wonderful. Land, home, mortgage, and so many bills. So that is what I love. Three things, three things most of us desire. We desire a relationship might be one, health might be one, and, and liberty or success. We can call it different things, but basically the whole mortgage, so many bills, that's the 
freedom element. That's the money element. That's the success element. So there's something in life, which for you, it's a physical expression or physical resources that you have a home and you have land and you have, but with that comes obligations. But if you had unlimited resources, would you be able to keep your land and your home? So today we'll explore the freedom element and the freedom is so big for a lot of us. Andrea, talk to me and tell me it's the freedom and freedom has many different tastes. There's some people that have resources, unlimited resources, but still are not free for different reasons. It could be physically, it could be mentally, it could be a lot of different things. It could be their situation that, that keeps them tied. It could be that they've made resources in a unethical way and they're actually in a different country, stuck, so not able to spend it. So freedom, freedom. So Andrea, ultimately what you're looking for is freedom. How does that taste? Jen, am I kidding myself if I feel content? Am I in fact afraid of looking for more? Jen, no, you might not be kidding yourself, but there might be a story in there that we can still um, determine. So contentment does not mean that there might be desires. And we also want to keep building and growing, growing and expanding. So if you feel content, Jen, fantastic. But what do you want to curate? What do you want to build? What do you want to dream? So although I am the biggest proponent of feeling content, satisfied, in gratitude and appreciation and loving every moment, I also love the flavor of dreaming and building and curating. So what is it from a lens of contentment that you want to build and curate? What do you want for I don't want to say what you want for your desire, for your future, but what do you want to build? So that we can still, and the whole point of the game is being satisfied and content. That's the name of the game. But what I like about this topic is we're going to talk about being satisfied and content and, 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 and gratitude, but also dreaming and building and curating and being inspired and traveling and, and getting more of that freedom and more of those tastes. Does that feel good? Does that feel good? So uh, fear of not having a home and Andrea, interesting, interesting, interesting. So fear of not having a home. So that's a nice deep rooted fear that we can start to explore. So first it was lack of freedom and now it's fear, fear of not having a home, which is different than saying I have obligations that keep me from traveling. Now there's actually a fear of losing it, which is different than of, of not having the resources. So it's interesting. Enjoy the flavor of that. Enjoy the awareness of the flavor of that. And let's explore it, explore it. Do you want to tell us more? Do you want to explore more about what the root of that fear is? What is that root? Aha, there we go, there we go. And I have goosebumps all over my arms. Ha ha, I lost everything, including home 10 years ago through a fire. Beautiful, Andrea, I'm telling you, goosebumps everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So let's feel into that. Let's take a moment because there's incredible energy and incredible awareness. And I think that there's a big aha for you and for me that your desire to travel isn't because you have no resources, limited resources. If there's a fear that being away, if you don't see, and tell me if this is resonating, that there's a fear that you're going to lose it. So you're entangled with your home because of the fear of losing that. How does that feel, Andrea? How does that feel? And what are the feelings? Yes, fantastic. And everybody knows, everybody knows, I see mostly familiar faces. When I say fantastic, it's the not the physical story that's fantastic, but it's the willingness to go deep inside and become aware of the conditioning, the resistance, the, the, the entanglement of what you think your desires are and what the actual fears are, the root fears are. So, and now we know that once we know, we can detangle from it.
So Andrea isn't going to, the awareness isn't going to be keep, keeping you stuck there. I see Gary's little picture floating through the bottom right now. We were talking a lot about resistance and he shared on attaining your authentic life. Somebody speaking about resistance and a lot of it had a lot of really interesting, wise elements. But one element was, do you break away from resistance? And the answer is yes and no. As a human, as a human, we will hold on to resistance our whole life because we are human and this is the human journey. But as an individual, we can overcome. There we go, Andrea, you made me cry. Now, finally, 10 minutes in and we have our first admitting crier. Fantastic, Andrea. And that's the release. That's the shift. That's the aha moment where you say, Oh my God, I've been carrying that inside and I haven't been willing to see it. And that relief of seeing it and letting it go and admitting that, oh my God, 10 years ago, that was so overwhelming. And the fear and the, Andrea, I don't want to make up those feelings. I'm sure that I can resonate with them. What were those feelings? Let them out. Let them out, let them out. So the whole point of awareness is not to keep us little, it's to move us to whole. And that's a theme that you all know that I've been really strongly trying to boom, boom, boom for all of us. We do our work slash play from a place of wholeness. It's part of the natural human experience. This is called humaning. I just released a meditation and talk called, what's it called? It's called um, to all students of earth school, to all students of earth school. And the whole essence is this is the normal part of humaning. This is our human adventure. This is our human journey. And the more we can start to have a lens for curiosity and admiration and honor and exploration and recognition that none of this is meant to hurt us. It's meant to help us grow and expand, grow and expand, grow and expand. Andrea, wow, 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 wow. And if any of you can resonate and try to pull into a, a story that feels familiar, then you can let go with Andrea being chopped into a million pieces. Being chopped into a million pieces. Fantastic. And Andrea, do you want to go deeper? Do you want to go more? Do you want to say why? Do you want to feel the thoughts? This is called deconstructing the key lime pie. So we ask a question, the answer gives us clues to resistance. And then we talk about that resistance and we get more clues. And what we want to do it, look at it from the four bodies, from the four bodies. Andrea, go for it. Just put it all out from the four bodies. So physically, how does it physically feel? So Andrea, share with us. And anybody who wants to deconstruct anything right now, share it in the window. Four, one, how do you physically feel? What are those physical sensations? Okay, so... So Andrea said really clearly, being chopped into a million pieces, that means not whole. That means that she's going around feeling unwhole, which is really not physically feeling good feeling. So chopped into a million pieces. So what's the physical? What's the physical? What's the physical? Two, two, what is the emotional associated feeling? So, okay, perfect. My heart was in front of me. So interesting, Andrea, that all of these words are making you feel torn apart and and detached and detached and and really interesting that your fire burnt the house and then in that you feel physically a million beautiful so keep going andrea keep going keep going and everybody keep going emotional mental what are the thoughts that you're feeling and and, and andrea is actually meshing them but giving us very strong symbolism and stories for how she's feeling and Andrea, go for it. Your mind and your beliefs, your beliefs. We saw some of your beliefs now. My belief is I'm not free to move because I'm fearful that I'll lose everything again, that I'll lose everything again, lose it all again. I'm pausing, I'm pausing, I'm pausing so we could take it all in because this is a lot. Andrea, helpless, couldn't stop crying, devastated, beautiful. And then Andrea, have you hidden it inside of you? Have you been true to all of this? Or have you buried this? Have you buried the pain and sort of living life and being happy and doing your things and not willing to really honor sort of how and what those feelings and those 
and those layers that you put on or feel in from or detangle the key, detangle the, um, the key lime pie, have you, have, how have you treated this past story? Let's all learn. I think I buried a lot of it as it has to be strong for my children. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So then now let's go to the point of shifting. Okay, so we've gotten through the layers and the rawness of the feeling and the acknowledgement that the reason that it's a lot, I call it like, what do I call it? Emotional throw up and there's a lot of energy being released is because it was hidden deep in that there was a, a lack of willingness to acknowledge it because we needed to be strong for others, strong for others. So now let's start to recognize, okay? Are you ready to start shifting, Andrea? So now we become the aware, aware of the four bodies and then acknowledge. So Andrea and everybody, what is it that you desire? What do you desire? What do you desire? So now we recognize all of that pain and that experience. It is meant to teach you to grow and expand. Are you ready to grow, expand on a spiritual level from this devastating, I put in quotes, devastating physical experience, which I know it's devastating. I'm not minimizing it, but by putting it in quotes, I'm minimizing, I'm, I'm putting in quotes, calling it on the physical landscape, the word was is devastating on a spiritual it's not so i jump around you guys so i'm doing a lot of teaching in this wow in this so i hope you guys all like this give me hearts if you're with me i'm giving a lot of teaching into how we deconstruct and how we break it down so how we break it down so now we're aware and it was repressed and now we're going to bring it to the forefront which andrea did by surprise did she know that she was going to be letting all this out by saying i want to travel Heck no, we had to detangle from it. And so we were aware of the five bodies, four, not five, the four bodies, and now the acknowledgement, acknowledgement, the acknowledgement, desire, freedom, to live without a fear of coming back to nothing. Powerful, so powerful. Andrea, were you not in the house? I assume you weren't in the house because you don't have the trauma of being in there and so there was that surprise factor of going and coming back i have no, i had no idea fantastic 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 i had gone out to lunch fantastic i think this is beautiful so andrea are you starting to shift are you starting to feel so you desire freedom freedom to live let's rephrase that a bit with she said without fear of coming back to nothing Let's reword that a bit. And anybody can help. Um, let me see what comes to me. And re reword it too. Uh, the desire to be free, not even to leave. The desire, freedom, desire, freedom. I desire to be free, to live from trust, abundance, um, there's a taste that I have in there. Security and safety. How does that feel? How does that feel? You want to be able to move around the world, around, around wherever you go with a sense of safety, security and trust and grounding and knowing that everything is always okay. How does that feel? Resonates. Fantastic. So Andrea, do you have your shift? And does everybody have their shift? Does everybody, I know there's a lot of comments I have to go through. I'm going to go through backwards. Um, Heidi, I do want to feel more, my biggest desire is inner peace. Monica, fantastic. Not just you. And we're going to talk about it. But Heidi, I do not want to feel, I do not want to feel more peace in my environment, in my current place or in my new peaceful, smoke free place in nature. I do want to. I do want to, not I don't want to. <laughs> One word or an apostrophe or two. I'm like, what? I don't. Okay, Heidi, I'm going to do it again. I do want to feel more peace in my environment, in my current place, or in a new peaceful, smoke free place in nature. I also had a few pipe burnt overflow floods in my apartment, so I'm dealing with some post traumatic stress and all of this, which is why I need to find peace in my life. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so. Andrea, my body feels like it's on fire right now. Fantastic. Let it out. Let it out. Don't repress it. Appreciate the intensity and the beauty of this moment. Okay, guys. So I'm going to pull back and I know there's a lot of comments, but this sounds like this is all coming to, this is all coming. This is coming to me. 
You all know that everybody will talk about something on the physical and say something really bad and I go, wonderful, fantastic, amazing. And you know that I have moments to say, wait, 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 you guys, you know I'm not saying amazing about what you said. I recognize what you said was really intense. But we are not here on this platform and in this inspiration to, we are here to support and to love and to feel and to hold each other, to hold each other. I create the intention when we enter this virtual room to hold each other in a place of safety and security and for us to safely be able to release. But the intention, Gary, don't make me laugh while I'm in the middle of saying something really serious. I'm a first timer, he says. Um, but the intention is for us to grow on the spiritual level, on the spiritual level. So if you are willing to acknowledge and start to speak on something that's speaking about manifestation, about something on the physical, that's amazing to me because it's the first step towards the releasing of it and, and the movement of it, the movement of it. So I'm seeing from a lot of people a desire for peace, a desire for peace. Is that resonating with everybody? I'm sort of going through to see. So I'm sort of going through. So let's ask this. Let's come. Let's come. And if there's, I'm not going to go back and scroll in the comments. If there's something you want me to put in, put it in the comment again. Okay. 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 Cause we really went through a lot. So does everybody want inner peace? Give me with a hand, give me with a heart, give me energy. Does everybody want inner peace? Yes, I agree. Peace, inner peace. Accepting situations I have no control. Valerie says no. Yes. Angela says yes. Fantastic. Okay. Does anybody feel that they have unconditional inner peace? Does anybody feel that they have all the time unconditional inner peace? Andrea, peace is always great. I fear more alive with joyfulness. Fantastic. And it's all the way we said, okay. Um... No, peace is not outside of ourselves. Already possess it, express it, and you'll have it. Beautiful. Cynthia, yes, there is. So, okay, but there is resistance, which Valerie is saying. There is resistance. So there, we are all here because we have some form of resistance. Now, I'm going to go to what the theme is today, and the theme is every day. So it's not a new theme. We just approach it from different layers and different ways and different times at different whatever. Inner peace is synonymous with bliss and joy and happiness and love. Can you guys all take that? They're all super big synonyms. And it all depends on how the flavor of the moment, the flavor of the moment. When we talked about it on Tuesday, it was called laughter. Today, we call it inner peace. Another day, we call it love. Another day, we call it happiness. But it's all, and actually earlier, who said that it was called contentment? It's all the same flavors. So do we agree that it's all the same flavors? I'm getting the hearts. Fantastic. So life and normal life conditioning is going to expose to us resistance to teach us to go back to what Cynthia is saying, inside, not outside. When I say to you all, I want you to curate the life that you desire and build and build, it's because when we create conditions that are spicy and tasty, it helps us align internally. But the truth of the matter, just like Cynthia says, it starts from in and then works its way out. It's not out and then in. We think when I get X and when I get Y and when I get Z, I will be happy. No. When I am happy, X and Y and Z will all come to me and it doesn't really matter because I'm happy anyway. I'm happy. Now the point is life's normal unfolding is going to give us experiences that teach us to go in. Without that fire, Andrea wouldn't have gone in. Without our life experiences we don't go in we would stay outside we would stay outside external outcomes our whole life without the fire without the mortgage without the bills without all of these things we would not have the desire to go in so the biggest shift 
that I pray for us all to intellectually get and then we will emotionally shift because the shift has to be on the four levels, egoically, mentally, emotionally, and physically is for us to recognize, oh, let's have compassion in the journey, that nothing is bad. We are all whole. Everything is wonderful. Not always feels wonderful, but it's not so personal and not so serious because it's a natural unfolding of a human journey. It's what we're all signed up for. It's called life and it's okay. And it's okay. And we don't need to call it suffering. We don't need to call it struggle. We don't need to call it hard. We don't need to call it painful. We don't need to call it all these things, which doesn't mean we might not be feeling it and experiencing it at times. But instead of labeling it that way, which feels hot and heavy and painful, hot fire, but it's liberating because we recognize, oh, I'm just here learning. Oh, I'm just here growing. Oh, I'm just here living. Oh, this is just the normal life experiences. This is just me journeying. This is me journeying. And right now I'm in the Alps, or right now I'm in the Sahara, or right now I'm in the Amazon. Any other place you all wanna be? So does that feel good? Okay, I've got the hearts, I've got the hearts. So what every single inspiration that we do together, the intention that I have is for us to have compassion compassion for ourselves and for everybody with our life stories from a place of whole we are all whole we are all whole we'll always be whole we'll always have been whole and we will we'll, we are whole we are whole cecilia says with me now with me now with each of us good andrea says ha ha i went all in have been going in since i was born Cecilia, play makes you happy. Heidi, yes, my insight timer tagline is inner peace is the way towards world peace. Oh my God, Heidi, I love that. I love that. And yes, one person can change the world. Heidi's tagline shows that one person can change the world. So I'm going to ask everybody again, okay? So I'm coming back to the question. And the question is about manifestation and the awareness of resistance. So we are going straight to number one. We want to feel inner peace, which is three. There's three. Freedom, which was what Andrea sort of talked about, but then it ended up being happiness and peace. Um, and happiness, and there's worthiness. So right now, let's talk about the happiness. So I'm going to come back. Does everybody want to feel inner peace slash happiness slash joyful slash blissful? And everybody said yes. So now I'm going to ask, what's staying in the what's in the way? What is in the way of that? And I'll pause. I'll pause. I see the hearts. Monica, grief. Fantastic. Andrea, myself. Fantastic. Monica, go deeper. Grief about what? Grief about what? If you want to rob the story without being, with being true to yourself, go for it. What was that? Mo, what was that? What was that? Myself. Uh, Valerie, fears and judgments, beautiful. Loss of my husband, Monica, beautiful. Loss in the physical life, beautiful. Beautiful, Monica, beautiful. Mo, Mo, what I just said, oh my God, Mo, you know that's the hardest question whenever you guys ask me what I just said or what I just asked. Okay, I just asked what's standing in the way, how it's standing in the way of your, your ability to be happy. What's standing in the way of your happiness, your peace, your, 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 your blissfulness, your joy? What's standing in the way? Standing in the way. Standing in the way. Heidi, now I can't read everyone's comments. Every now and then, Insight Timer glitches. As long as it doesn't glitch for me, then we're fine. We're overall fine. Deb, a job. Having, getting a job or the job that you have. And that's sort of your freedom is standing away, the, your happiness. And sometimes the three get in tangled which is really fun because now you're like oh is it freedom or is it happiness and what kind of job do i have and is it giving me enough money and then now it's about worthiness and then the three of them are entangled and so then you have a bit more fun detangling it and coming to your unconditional happiness and freedom and worthiness beautiful 
them. The job I have, very stressful. Beautiful. No lack of money, lack of resources. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. And I'm going to say again and again and again, okay, do you all agree and understand intellectually the concept that is if you calibrate to feeling differently, the external world will feel differently? Does everybody agree? Does anybody have any resistance to that? Does anybody have resistance to that? That the key is the internal feeling. Does anybody have any resistance? I imagine, imagine, imagine that you're on this platform. The answer is no, but does anybody? Sporty Jen, at the moment, I really don't feel any resistance. I don't know what's happened to me. I feel at ease and I'm going with the flow. Sporty Jen, what happened to you is you have been dedicated to going in. And at one point, it's hard and hard and hard and hard and hard until easy. You're not like Gary that you came for the first time today and boom, he wants to switch. You've been... <laughs> you've been here consistently saying i'm looking in i'm looking in i feel bad i do this i whatever until one day it's no longer hard again what do i say it's hard until it's easy it's hard until it's easy so today sporty jen who has been very, very open and clear about all of the losses that she has experienced on this human journey. Says, I don't know what the heck is wrong with me, but today I'm here feeling unresistant. How many times has she been on attaining my authentic life saying, I feel really bad today. I finished the inspiration and I feel good. I feel really bad. I, everybody's laughing, Gary, at your, <laughs> at the Gary joke. <laughs> Thanks, Gary, for setting me up for that out of the ballpark hit. So it's hard until it's easy. So who just said, who just said that it was hard? Let me see. Lack of money. Who just said it was hard? Lost my husband. Who just said it was hard? Okay, who says... Oh, I can't find it. Where is it? Now I'm like, anyway, someone just said it hard, but I want to say your name because I read, ah, Mo, but feels easier said than done. It's hard until it's easy. I said this last inspiration, tying, I don't know why I always bring up tying shoelaces because I had so much difficulty in kindergarten, so much difficulty in kindergarten learning how to tie shoes i remember but guess what you guys you know my character by now i was determined to figure it out and i ended up figuring it out at home on the vacuum when my mom was vacuuming i was playing with the cord or something and i figured out i'm like aha tying I remember learning to tie was one of the hardest things until it wasn't. Riding our bike, the hardest thing until it wasn't. Rollerblading, really hard until it wasn't. Roller skating, until it wasn't. Until it wasn't. So yes, 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 Mo, it's going to be really hard until it isn't. It's going to be really hard until it isn't. Ask Sporty Jen. Ask Sporty Jen. Don't ask Gary. Andrea, you probably invented the new shoelaces. Yes, I was the Velcro queen. I was the Velcro queen. I was, I was. The times table, Monica, the times table. So beautiful. The loss of your beautiful husband is going to be really hard till it's not. It's going to be really hard until it's not. And how does, what do you do when it's really hard? You honor it, not bury it. Andrea, I'm going to poke at you. You don't bury it. Because then you stuff it in and you don't allow yourself to acknowledge what you're feeling and then it comes out in distorted ways. Then you become a distorted human for a bit. You become distorted. You become angry instead of sad. Who was it, Valerie, that asked us to talk about anger because, of, because she expresses sadness instead of anger, but she's angry. And, and meanwhile, Sporty Jen is the opposite. It's, it might be the anger that's expressed, not the sadness. So we have to, have to, have to, have to honor it, honor it. Beautiful. Monica, just when I think I'm making progress, processing my grief bang, beautiful. Then maybe now you're going to make me cry. Okay, I am having my moment because I feel that really intensely. Whew. Monica, that was intense. I felt that so intensely. Yes, Monica. Yes, but it is still progress. It is still progress. And I say it all the time. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Everybody's always sorry when you make me cry. <laughs> but 
it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sporty Jen is resisting wanting to laugh because um, it's not Tuesday. Monica, were you here for our Tuesday laughter? I don't remember seeing you. Okay, Monica, it's not a straight line. Being on the human journey is not a straight line. We are not going to do this. We are not going to do this. We're going to do this. So with your grief and your mourning and your pain, if you want to do this, go at it. And you are still making progress. You are still making progress. Still making progress. Every time I tied my shoelace, it guided me to the time that I could. Every failure, failure, was a step towards my success. One of my dear old girlfriends is just starting to teach. She just started to teach, I think it's second grade, third grade. I don't know what grade she's teaching. Anyway, she one of the young men was having trouble with math and she used to love math and one day he was having trouble with math. And so she spoke to the whole class from a place of inspiration and passion. And she said, children, I don't know if she said children, but it sounds good. I'm going to channel being a teacher. Nobody laugh at me because I'm going to have a funny moment. <laughs> I can feel it coming. Children, how many times do you think they worked on building the rocket to go to the moon? How many times? How many failures do you think they took to be able to make the trip to the moon? The kids gave out numbers. You can't succeed without our failures. Can't. So then those failures aren't actually called failures. They're the route to success. So Monica, you are progressing. And that's the lens of Mattel. 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 I can't even say my name. That's the lens of Manel. And that's the lens of Matane. How do we shift our lens to accept and to love the process? That's the, that's the joy ride we are on collectively. That's our joy ride. Who wants to be on the joy ride? Hearts and words. Felly, 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 felly. You'll never know what you're capable of if you never try. Fantastic. And you've never failed. You've never pushed yourself. I'm getting the hearts, those that want to join. I'm so excited because the more the merrier. We are having a blast. We are having a blast. Gary, Manel, I noticed my good times are really good, but there's sometimes, then sometimes really good, but the bad ones are rough, fantastic. And Gary, what did I say? Let's measure the good times. Let's measure the decrease in the frequency of the bad ones. And let's watch and measure the amplitude of the bad ones going down. You conditioned, you had a conditioning that go like this. They go like this. Let's measure your success. And Monica too. Monica wants to be on the joyride. Let's measure the success, not by the bad ones going away. This would keep us from being human. The frequency, so instead they used to be, I'm gonna now channel my inner metronome for everybody that's a pianist or any type of instrument player. From them to being before tick, 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 to tick. That was frequency, frequency. I just demonstrated frequency. And then the amplitude. That was really annoying. I'm sorry, guys. And We want the frequency to become bigger and the amplitude to be shorter. <laughs> Cecilia, I think that's a laugh in a different language and I love it. Ja, 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 ja. I <laughs> love it. That's how we measure. Monica, that's how you measure. And it's okay if the frequency is together for a bit, then you go boom, that stretch. That's how we measure ourselves. That's how we measure. And how do we do it? We focus. You focus. You focus on the inside. Andrea, that's a problem when you say you are so funny and real. You guys, you can't say things like that because then I go more. I do more. <laughs> oh my God, Cecilia said C and yes. Okay, Lisa, I find myself recognizing getting out of situations that aren't for me quicker now. That's it. That is it. That's it. Together, again, I've said it on many live streams and I really loved when I say it, so I'm gonna keep saying it. If you think I'm gonna teach you how not to be human, do not follow me. Do not, <laughs> do not. And I've also asked if the, any non-humans in the room step up so I cannot speak to you. 
We are human. So in the human, we are going to feel the spectrum of feelings. What has been bad is that we've been taught that they are bad. They are not bad. Life is going to happen. Life is going to happen. What we want to do is be empowered, to be inspired, to take life from the place of, from being the curator, the manifester, the actor, the dreamer. Today's topic, that's why it's one of my favorite topics. But then I call every topic my favorite topic, so I'm waiting for you guys to call me a hypocrite, but they're all my favorite topics. You all know they are my favorite topics. Does anybody have an issue that I call every topic my favorite topic? And does anybody have an issue that I'm always excited, always excited about today's inspiration? Because I'm like, Manal, you're saying it the same way. And it's not, but the truth, it's like your children. They're all your favorite children until one of them's not, and then they are. No issue, says Monica. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Monica, life is my story to a degree. So anytime I hear you speak to Monica, it sounds like you're speaking to me. Monica, that's so funny. That's so cute. And there are two Monicas. I didn't even notice that there were two Monicas till now. You guys can play mind games on me. I'm watching um, Dead to Me and whatever episode, oh, I can't even say, I've learned, I've been, I, spoiler alert, I almost said a spoiler. Okay, she's not going to, head up. Okay, Sporty Jen, listen to your intellectual gut instinct, not your nervous gut resistance. Fantastic, but honor your resistance because it's telling you something, telling you something telling you something. Manal, your passion is so amazing to see and feel. So fantastic, so fantastic, so fantastic. Manal, Gary, what did I say? What did I say? Love all topics and you. Thank you. Double trouble, double trouble with the Monica's for sure. Okay, love that show. Lisa, yeah, I'm really enjoying it too. It's like, what? Every episode there's like a, what? <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. Okay, and Monica loving at Monica. Oh my God, so cute. Okay, I just finished the show. Okay, I'm still, I don't even know what season I'm in. Okay, so fantastic. So where are we? So let's talk about it again. What is it that we want to manifest? What is it that you want to attain? What is your greatest desires? What is it? Talk to me like lovers do. There's a song, there's a song. So we sang today, we cried today, I cried, you cried, we've done fantastic. And we're just 42 minutes in. We are just 42. We are fantastic. Neil, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Financial freedom. It's one of my favorite topics. And it's so... I am in a world that I'm surrounded by wealth. I am in a world that I am surrounded with people that have more money than they know what to do in this lifetime and they can do in this lifetime. It's part of my world. And what fascinates me is that even though that we're in that world and I have so many that I can visually see that I personally know, they still have human, real human life, real human life. So Financial freedom and financial abundance are a very simple human vibration. So what I want everybody to know, and Neil, you, since you've asked it, that financial freedom is a vibration no different than love, no different than worthiness, no different than happiness, no different than joy. And once you start to taste it, as a vibration and start to work on that vibration, that financial freedom and that freedom ever since will just come flooding to you, flooding to you. So let's talk about what financial freedom means, okay? Let's talk about that. And Gary's saying the same thing, peace in a trip to Hawaii, hint. <laughs> where, I don't know where the hint, Jen, hint, there's a hint. So let's talk about financial freedom. It's like I said, it's one of my favorite. What does that mean vibrationally? What does that mean vibrationally? And Lisa starts, it can provide security and options, security and options. I guess Jen lives in Hawaii. Okay. I'm missing. Yes. Jen is in Hawaii. Okay. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I'm going to list them. Okay. Financial freedom is a freedom. 
liberty, abundance, security, safety, worthiness. I said freedom, but it's coming back to me. Freedom, because there's just many tastes of freedom. So Neil and everybody that has that desire, what is the most resistant aspect of your financial freedom? For me, for me, there was a worthiness aspect and a freedom aspect in terms of being controlled. So it was so interesting to watch how my abundance comes to me because it would come because there was a part of me that lived very like a lot of those I had mastered, but there were some stories. So it's so interesting to see how my gifts come to me with those distortions matching my conditioning, my resistance conditioning. It's fascinating, fascinating to watch the vibrational breakdown of the abundance that comes to me. It's fascinating. So talk to me, talk to me. Everybody that wants freedom, and that's the travel, that's the financial, that's the bank account, that's the home, that's everything. What is standing in your way? What? And if you want to talk about the physical sense, talk about it. If you want to talk about the emotional, talk about it. If you want to talk about the mental, talk about it. And the point, Lisa, self-doubt. Self-doubt. And self-doubt, you know, Lisa, is worthiness. Self-doubt is, am I capable? Am I capable? <gasps> Vishal, I love it. Laziness is a sense of self-sabotage. You and Gary can be best friends. Self-sabotage. So that laziness is actually more related to an A. I am fearful of my inability to do it, so I'm going to do it by not doing it. And now instead of being incapable, I am lazy. It's a layer and layer and layer of resistance that keeps you from the fear of recognizing, of recognizing, oh my God, my, my laptop wants to reboot. I'm going to dismiss that right now. That keeps you from your recognition that you're actually fearful that you're not capable. Vishal, how does that feel? How does that feel and does that resonate? And that's powerful because now you got to see a few layers and it's wonderful. R, 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 beautiful R. I feel that my mental health and emotional baggage is demanding to be addressed first. Okay, so R, you one of my favorite topics. How many have I, how many times have I said it's and not or. How many times have I said it's and not or? It's and, 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 and. You can curate all of these things and have all of these ands. They don't need to be or. They don't need to be or. They can be and. Okay, Vishali, I, I'm going to tell you again. Why are you lazy? Let me get you to lead yourself there. Why are you lazy? What is your laziness hiding from you? You go deep. I told you, but maybe I told you too quickly. What is your laziness keeping you from? Okay. Why do you think you're lazy? And what is your laziness protecting you from? Belly. Insecurity. Insecurity. So insecurity can actually is an interesting one. So it depends on what angle. Insecurity could be worthiness. Insecurity. So I feel insecure in my capability. I'm unworthy. Or insecurity could be the sense of freedom. So in terms of the security. So freedom. So which one is it for you, family? Which one is it for you? And all of this is hints. I might, you guys might get a clue that awareness and it might shift immediately, like Andrea had that big shift today with respect to the house, or you realize, oh, here's a muscle I need to work on. Here's the muscle. So whatever it is, it's great. So if it's a muscle that I recognize, ooh, here's a muscle. So I'm gonna to start to go to inspirations and meditations and talks that talk about this muscle. And I'm gonna to start to go deep, deep, deep to understanding. So every day on our inspirations, I am inviting for everybody a shift, a shift. And that shift, can happen 
at, and again, we're not measuring things by zero, one, okay? It's by frequency and amplitude. So we're working on increasing or decreasing the frequency depending on if it's a positive vibration or a negative vibration and increasing the uh, amplitude or decreasing the amplitude depending on it being positive or negative. You guys got me on that, right? You guys got me on that. So, so, so today, if all you get is like, ooh, wow, fun. I get to work on this muscle and I'm going to keep becoming aware of it and aware of it and aware of it and building it and building it and building it until Sporty Jed says, ooh, I'm here. I got no resistance. I'm having fun. And I'm going to love you all and be with you all and, 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 and party with you all. But now that she wrote, let's see what her, what her thing is. Okay, good, good. Okay, good. Okay, um, do, 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 Gary, Manel, I feel that my financial freedom always developed when I was a peaceful and at ease. Yes, Gary, we only manifest from a place of ease. We only manifest from a place of trust and knowing, knowing, knowing more on the egoic level, even though I pointed at my third eye, knowing, knowing, and trusting, and just an alignment and secure and free and peaceful it's peaceful i mean like i said i am amazed at watching the vibrational nature of people who have a lot of financial freedom but they might not have freedom everywhere but and watching that the once you get that flavor that ability for it to scale in such a big way, in such a fast way is amazing, amazing. Neil, you hear me, do you like, is there anything else that you want any awareness from? Let me know that. Valerie, worthiness, fantastic, worthiness. And I know that you know that and you're working on that muscle. So you know worthiness, worthiness. I got to hold myself from a place of I'm amazing. I got to hold myself from a place that I'm equal. I got to hold myself from a place of I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Lost you all for a bit. What show? Uh, oh, I think we were talking about dead to you, dead to you, but that was a leg, Andrea. Vishali. Okay. We read that. And Valerie has a picture of an ant. Is it ant? <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Lisa's like on it for me. Okay. I'm going to read Vishali's up down here. Do you mean laziness is because I don't think I'm not worthy or like it's not going to happen, so I'm not even going to try? Yes, yes. There's a couple of layers of it's easier to say that I failed because I didn't care and I didn't try and I'm lazy than acknowledging the fact that I'm not worthy or I don't think I'm capable and I'm scared of failure. How does that feel? How does that feel? Archie, presence, talk to me. Wow. Wow. Michelle Lee. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's easier to say I'm lazy and I didn't care than to say, Oh, I, I'm not, I wasn't, I failed. It's much easier, much easier. Got the goosebumps. So I feel the shift, feel the shift, feel the shift. Thank you. Okay. I don't know what OFC means, Jen, my Hawaiian princess. I don't know. Archie presence. What do you mean with Archie? What do you mean with Arch, what, uh, presence. <laughs> um, Valerie, yes, and because you said and or, and I kept saying and, 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 and. Okay, fantastic. So funny, some of the legs. Uh, Valerie, I also have worthiness issues. Maybe I'd be good if I had better jokes. Oh my God. Okay, so let's see. I missed some. Okay, 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 let's see. Feely, I feel that removing toxic relationships and situations can help us get the new life we desire. Yes, and Feely, what I would ask is why are you in that toxic relationship? Toxic relationships are usually about Ha, all three of them. Is it about freedom? Is it about worthiness? Or is it about love? It could be about all three of them. And yes, you, the relationships are actually a gift to recognize what's going on within you. It's a mirror to your inside. A mirror to your inside. So, and ultimately, when you get rid of those, it means that your inside doesn't need that teaching anymore and it's broken through. Good, good, good. That's big, that's big, that's big. And if you want more, we can talk about more. Cynthia, being addicted to the lifestyle I currently have going on. Being addicted to the lifestyle I currently have going on. I know how to navigate daily. 
Abundance requires me to step into an unknown. What if you fail? Fantastic. Failure, the fear of failure, fear. The fear of failure, the fear of failure. And it's, it's wonderful and it's powerful and that awareness is all you need to know. I'm scared of failing. And then what is it that we said right now about failing? What is it that we said about failing? That failure is success. Failure is a step to success. Failure is synonymous with success. So instead of us thinking, it, <laughs> you guys like my tail? Instead of us thinking that we're failing, it's actually we're succeeding. We're totally succeeding. We're so succeeding. <laughs> Valerie, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Cecilia, the same with a toxic job. Yes, Cecilia, yes. I'm leaving to play in January. Fantastic, Cecilia. Same thing. And instead of hating it, Thank it. Thank it for teaching you. Thank it for teaching you. Vashali, so you mean if I try and not be lazy, I'm not going to fail? I mean, if you recognize you're not lazy, you just have not embraced your inspiration and your flow because of fear, and you acknowledge your fear, you will no longer be lazy and you will follow your inspiration and life will lead you where you want to be led. That's what I mean. Tell me how that resonates. Manel, anxiety is something we don't talk about that much and a lot of us struggle with it. Gary, we talk about anxiety all the time. <laughs> we can do it. Inspiration on anxiety. Anxiety, I always tell you all that anxiety is a fear that I cannot label. Anxiety is a fear that I cannot label. And I remember the day that you all taught me, I said, what's worth fear and anxiety? And some of you said fear and some said anxiety. So it really depends on how you process it of whether you think anxiety or fear is worse. You guys, should I kick him off? That was a joke. <laughs> oh my God, Gary, your humor. Okay, you guys, do you want me to kick my kitty off whose tail is like right in my face? Oh my God. Rachel, failure is okay too, right? Because it's not an end. Exactly, 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 exactly. Failure is not failure. We are fearful of something that leads to our success. We are fearful of something that leads to our success. Can we not, can we decide as part of our principle that failure is not failure? It's, it's the journey to success. <laughs> Sporty Jen says, ask him if he knows any good jokes. <laughs> I can't. I'm supposed to be serious and pull up my inspiration and then you guys are giving me these one-liners. What am I supposed to do with them? <laughs> oh my God, Jen. Maybe he knows more kitty jokes. For those of you that weren't here on Tuesday, Tuesday was healing as a tool for laughter. Or wait, I keep saying it wrong. Laughter is a tool for healing. And all the sporty Jen could say was kitty jokes and cat jokes. <laughs> Oh my God, you're killing me. Okay, guys, I have to get serious here. Um, Manal, anxiety is something we don't talk much about here, he says. <laughs> okay, you are all killing me. So there are something in there. Oh, R, good one. Codependence. What is codependence? Again, not feeling capable. Not feeling capable. Not feeling free. Not feeling worthy. It has the taste of all of them entangled in there. Beautiful, beautiful. You guys, this is beautiful. Archie, I just want to be present. Just want to be present. Just want to be present. I'll post it soon, Andrea. I saw that. And you guys, what happens is like, you someone comments and I up scroll to the top and it goes to the bottom. And sometimes I read the bottom and sometimes go to the top, just so you know what my technical, what's going on. Okay, Archie, I just want to be present. Let's see what I can manifest then. Yes, Archie. Well, Archie, what is it that you want to be? And present, this is what it is about present. You know, everybody knows we just want to be present. Resistance keeps us from being present. And so then resistance is another gift to teach us to be present. And we do that by going internally, understanding the resistance and letting it go. It's all one and the same game. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody tell me. Feely, beautiful feely. I have anxious attachment struggles. What does that mean? What does that mean? We've never talked about anxiety, says Gary. So tell me what does that mean? Attachment struggles. Attachment to others, attachment to things, 
Um, anxious, I got, that's fear. Struggles is you're having difficulty with it. And attachment, let me understand more of what that word attachment means. And let's reword that. I am aware, okay, beautiful. I am aware, not I have, I am aware. I attach to relationships that are not healthy, fantastic. So in there, it's about worthiness. It's about worthiness. So let's try to understand. You need to understand, no, you need to. Where does that language come from sometimes? Let's understand where your conditioning that keeps you not feeling worthy to be in a strong, healthy, loving, supporting, amazing relationship. Let's figure that out together. Vishali, wow, I had to write it down to understand it, but now it makes perfect sense, fantastic. So I'm gonna tell you something, Vishali, you are not lazy. None of us are lazy. And that doesn't mean that sometimes you don't sit down and just relax and be and do, but it's all about waiting for that moment of inspiration and acknowledge your fear so you can flow. Flow, flow, flow. Oh my God. Okay. Told you guys I can't stop smiling and laughing. <laughs> oh, okay. Gary, Archie, isn't it awesome when we are present? It's so nice to be present. So nice to be present. Okay. Lisa, used to this treatment from childhood. Fantastic. Fantastic. So go and we'll do together. And what is that mistreatment labeled and called? What is that mistreatment? Let's talk about it. Let's understand it. What is that then? Are you not worthy? What do we need to rebuild? Is there some some just some healing for the baby you that we go into and make and feel the connection to whole what is it that you that would really fill your bucket lisa because once we're aware we're a step towards it okay um our awareness is key so it sounds like the next step is practice leading in doing better yes our, our everything is let's Again, and the now speak. Step one is awareness, two is acknowledgement, three is appreciation, four let go, and then five is surrender. So awareness is the toughest one because awareness requires you to look inside and take responsibility to everything that's happening outside of you. Awareness makes you say that that guy that cut you off in traffic was because something internally that I need to grow from. So it's sometimes the most sensitive. Like I say to you guys, someone said something really bad and I'm like, fantastic. And it's like, really, Manel, did you say fantastic? Yes, because the awareness is key. 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 Lisa, was bouncing off Philly's comment because I relate and know what you mean by anxious attachment. Okay, fantastic. So we were not raised with unconditional love and worthiness and freedom. So it allowed us to curate ourselves into these little adults who are used to being treated poorly because we don't have the worthiness to recognize, oh, I deserve to be treated like a princess, like a prince, like a king, like with love, unconditional love, unconditional anything. And then now we have the opportunity to fill our buckets. Now we have the opportunity to realize, oh, this is my human journey to grow and expand. That I get to recognize that whether it's going back to your inner child, it's NLP, whatever work it we do to fill that baby full of love and, and unconditional worthiness and love and freedom and to recognize that I don't need to continue to learn that lesson of worthiness because I am full and I see and I'm true to myself. Lisa, good, good, good. And I know a lot of that's intellectual. The shift doesn't happen intellectually. All the shifts happen emotionally. So when I know when I speak to it, speak to it, it's not enough. We need to shift to it emotionally, which we can do in a meditation. If you all want a meditation today, we can do one. We haven't done one in a while, but we can do one. But those shifts happen in meditation and they happen Actually, okay, let's do it really quickly. You know what? Not really quickly. Okay, wait, let me go back to some of these comments and then let's go into the feeling. Sporty Jen, I've been waiting. I've seen this a lot of time I've been. Um, it's interesting because we are, are we ever really content? Because when you want something, it's that you don't have it. So I think health is your wealth. That's what I would like. I can say that because I'm okay, content financially, but when I was younger and traveled the world with my sister, I got into a lot of debt, but had my health. The need to travel was my escapism from life at home. 
On the plus side, if we hadn't have traveled and all those wonderful experiences, I wouldn't be in the same position to where I'm not with my lovely sis. So it is life, see the moment. Sporty Jen, you have so much in there. And I love it all. And it comes back to my and. My and. First of all, one of your points is there's health and their wealth. And I talked about in the beginning, we're all looking for three things. Success, which is the health, sorry, success, which is the wealth, the, the degrees, the job, the health, which is being healthy, strong, slim, whatever it is, the physical, and then the relationship, the love, the connection, whatever. So we're all looking for the three. And I want us to have and... I don't want me to say, well, I have my health, I, not, I don't want wealth. I want you to have health and wealth, and health and wealth and love. Not like, oh, at least I have the health and the wealth, it doesn't matter what love. I want us to have the ands. But we are human, so life's human expression is going to teach us, which will likely be one of the buckets, because there's only three buckets. But I want what the essence that you're saying sporty jen is just live where you are love where you are you had the debt and the travel and the love so you had the, the the freedom and the love but maybe not the success and you were full and now you have the success and you're getting to your full because you miss some of the love and the relationships because they're lost and that's exactly the essence of everything we do together is how do you find a love, a true appreciation for what you have now. And then, because today's topic, and dream big all ands, not ors, ands. Go for that career that you want. Imagine that business that you want. Write that book that you want. Publish what you want. Have, find the love of the life that you want. Travel the places that you want. And, and, and. Health, wealth, and love. Relationship, Steve. Relationship. And Steve, I saw you said something way up below, above when I missed a lot of those. So if you want to write that back up the window, go for it. And anybody, if I missed your comments, go for it. And I think I'm caught up now with the most recent ones that I just missed. Um, right? Because I was jumping around. Cynthia, I read that about you feeling. And then we were talking a bit about the toxic relationships. I think I'm caught up now. I think I'm caught up now. If I'm not, put it back in the window. And I know I missed some in the very beginning, so bringing me back. Sporty Jen, don't make me sad, Manal. I don't want to cry. Just <laughs> Sporty Jen, laugh. Your, your tears are a release for your happiness, so it's okay. And if you didn't do all those tears, you wouldn't find your happiness, so it's okay. But what did I say that made you want to cry? That that you're, you're the one that wrote it. I just read what you said. Don't blame me for reading you. <laughs> You know, it's raining outside. I don't know if you guys can hear. And I, there's a uh, old story story that talks about the tears being like those that like the rain being the tears of those that have already passed. And anyway, every time it rains, there's some like it's like in a in a wonderful way. Cecilia, I love rain too, and I love rain at the beach. I love rain at the beach, and I love rain when I don't need to leave the house. I love rain, love rain when I don't need to leave the house. Sporty Jen, don't make me cry, Manel. And I read what she read. Okay, Valerie, Valerie. What's the difference between relationships and connection? Valerie, relationships is the physical expression of connection. Connection is the spiritual meaning of it. So connection is how you feel when you're in relationship. But you don't need relationship to have connection. And ultimately what we're looking for life in life is connection. So the external word for connection is relationship. The internal is connection. And that's why I'm always like, okay, connection with the earth and connection with spiritual. Steve, 
Steve, Steve, Steve, how come it doesn't come out in the same pitch that everybody else's does? Okay, I have needs looking at desires as wants. No, that's, yes, you can, but I don't want it to be from there. I want it from a place of, or I inspire, or I, 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 I what's the right word? I encourage, I, I inspire, I don't know why I'm not finding the right words, for it to be looking at not from needs, not from wants, but in terms of desires, curating, building, acting. You are the actor, the manifester, the curator of your life. You are. I have a whole bunch. I just recorded 30 meditations and, and talks that will come over the holidays because I won't be there during the inspirations. And one of them is talking about manifesting. And it talks about not making it a need and not making a want and not waiting for the external to feel good internally. We want to look at internally, but we want to build. We are builders. We are architects. We are actors. We are curators. We are artists. How do you want your life to look like? From a place of inspiration, not from need and not from want and not from pain. Steve, how does that feel? How does that feel? That's the distinction to do what Gary said, that whenever my financial abundance comes in, I'm at peace and at ease because he's doing it from inspiration like an artist. I know, I'm not saying that I don't have them. I'm saying that they don't have me. Yes, yes, yes. They don't have you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's the distinction that I want to make with, and who was it that said above that says, oh, Manal, I like that you called it um, a, a curating the life that you want. This manifesting Cosmo's back. <laughs> if anybody was not sure, Cosmo is back. <laughs> So funny. Okay, 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 okay. Bashali, why do we attract guys that we don't want? Ah, we attract guys that we don't want because it's part of the journey towards of towards self-worth and towards uh, towards happiness and towards us recognizing that we're worthy. And we're worthy. Maybe we were taught that men were more worthy than women. Maybe we're taught to be subservient. Maybe we were taught from society and conditioning that we weren't as good as others. You could see it in different cultures and different languages and different people and different everything. Colors of hair, colors of eyes, colors of skin. And in that, it's a belief that we're either worthy or we're not. And so obviously it's not a secret that women as a species have come and evolved into having a sense of worthiness that's different than men. And, and that's part of our journey and it's not bad. Women are amazing, men are amazing. All sexes are amazing. We get, don't get to choose, so let them all. And anybody who wants to identify in any way is amazing. It's amazing. But that doesn't mean that we don't have conditioning that we have attracted that we're learning to find and calibrate to our worthiness. Does that answer your question, Vishali? Rachel, it's been cold morning, cold raining all morning. Yeah, it's been coming more heavily down here as well. Okay, Sporty Jen, because my sister was my soulmate and I won't be able to find that same kind of unique relationship again. I don't want to aspire to something and then I get desperate trying to find it. I'm still smiling, not crying. Sporty Jen, fantastic. And I think what you need to do is really stop looking for what you had and see what you have. You're ready to hear that. And every time you shift, you shift when you decide, I'm going to look at what I have, not what I had. Measure the barometer of your life through what you have. And that's what appreciation is, and that's what satisfaction is, that's what contentment is. It's being present with the now and what you have in the now. Sporty Jen, how does that resonate? Steve holding, okay, Steve, I'm not, I know I'm not saying that I don't have them. I'm saying that you, they can't have me. Okay, I read that. Holding on to old notebooks. Yes, Steve, yes, that's a good analogy. That's a really good analogy. Sporty Jen, how does that feel? Lisa provides contrast. I think that's the something that I said. Okay, Lucas, how to deal around feeling lost. Okay, Lucas, it's beautiful. I actually have a, a 
meditation and talk on hopelessness coming up and hopelessness I feel is like being lost. One, it's a resistance. So don't take it so seriously. It's no different when we were talking about the, the vibration of financial abundance. So now you recognize, oh, so instead of you taking it personally and saying, I am lost, which you didn't, you said, I'm feeling lost, which is wonderful. So I'm not saying you did, but I'm just walking through the journey, walking through the journey. Valerie, thank you for the gift, just seeing it, um, is you recognize, oh, this is a vibration. This is a normal part of the human journey. I am human and I am humaning. So that takes off the personalization. So feeling lost is different than I am lost. So I'm glad that you said it. So I am lost is the most, and look how I'm going to my throat. It's the most personalizing of it. I'm feeling lost is less personal. Now when you say, oh, this is just a normal part of the human journey, you can take off and remove another layer it. Now you ask yourself, so you're aware, you're aware, and the more we're aware of it, we're looking at depersonalizing it and that awareness so we can shift to the other layers and also looking at how you're feeling in the different body. Lucas, do you know why you're feeling lost? Do you know what the physical circumstances are about feeling lost? That's helpful because again, you want to break it down to the four bodies. So the feeling, that emotion is the feeling lost. What's the physical story? What's the thoughts that you have with it? And what are your beliefs? And then we start to recognize, oh my goodness, what is it that I desire? What is it that I desire? And you're like, oh, I desire connection. <gasps> I just want to feel connected to, wow. I thought I want to feel connected to other people, but I just want to feel connected to myself. I want to feel connected to myself. I just want to feel true to myself. I want to feel connected that I am here with a purpose, that I'm here on this life for a purpose. Oh my God, I am my purpose. Oh, wow. This is just humaning. This is human journey. Oh my God, I have such a newfound awareness that this is just normal and I'm just needing to muscle through it and everybody's muscling through everything. And oh, right, what did that girl say on Insight Timer? She said just, it's humaning. Celebrate your humanness. Oh, I felt it resonate at that moment. Oh, yes, yes, I'm just taking it too personally. <gasps> okay, let me let it go. Let me shift. Let me let it go. Oh, <gasps> feels so good. I just want to surrender and surrender to life. That was, Lucas, how does that feel? That was like a little micro walkthrough. And the whole point is, it's normal and it's humaning. And the more we can keep shifting and shifting and shifting to shifting to what is the life I want to curate and this is a normal for human expression, boom, boom. Fantastic, fantastic. Lucas, how did that feel? Okay, okay. Mo, I attract amazing, beautiful women, but then sabotage it, fear of commitment. Mo, you, I have so many girlfriends right now that I'm watching with amazement as not amazement, with like love and with, with respect and honor and during that cycle and watching that cycle. And fantastic. Become aware of it. And every woman that you attract that's amazing, just become aware if you're attracting even more amazing, more amazing, amazing. And just watch how that you, like I said to my girlfriend last time that she went through the cycle and she just fell out of a relationship that was really, it caught me by surprise too. I'm like, ooh, because I look at the pictures and I'm like, well, this is what he looks like. So funny. And she's like, oh my God, no, you're so right. But anyway, she just fell out of it. And I'm like, I see this as a success because I saw that you got in and out really quickly, that you saw really quickly that he was not real and you actually attracted the best one so far. She's like, well, I'm glad you see this positive now. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm like, I do, I see it as positive. It's okay, like you're learning, you're vibrating. So Mo, it's the same thing that we were talking earlier to Gary and to Monica about the frequency and the amplitude. Watch your relationships is frequency and amplitudes and maybe the frequency of either that you start to feel fear or the longer that you don't, that fear of commitment. Watch the amplitude of the relationship feeling good and measure yourself on the on, on calibrating towards getting to that stability that you're looking for. How does that feel to you, Mo? How does that feel, darling? 
How does that feel? Sometimes I say things, I hope you guys don't mind. I just called you darling. I hope that's okay. And I call you guys girls sometimes and boys sometimes and whatever it might be. I hope. Feels good. Okay, fantastic. You are beautiful and I love you. Okay, holding on to old notebooks, Blue's Clues, Steve is inspiring. Gary, everyone here should know how legitimate, wow, Gary, how legitimate Manal is. A few days ago, I was having a major freak out period and she took the time to talk me off the, I hope I did. I was really, was not sure how I was supporting. So if anyone has a fear of asking questions, you should just ask if she really, I do really care about all of you. I care about all of you. I care about all of you. And I am so honored and fascinated and inspired by you all, all of you, you all, all, all. And I love watching us calibrate to a higher and higher. Can you feel like I can feel all of your vibrations are getting higher. Can you feel that my vibration is getting higher because of you? You are all helping me have more clarity and more confidence and more worthiness and more, and I said confidence already. Sometimes I say things in twice and sometimes I say it in threes, but when I say it in threes, it's deliberate. When it's twice, it's not always, but yes, this is an amazing journey. Let's have fun with it. That's my thesis. That's my thesis. And I'm having so much fun. I told my niece, I said to her, you need to, she's been on sometimes. I'm like, you need to be part of this. She's going through her journey. I said, you need to be here. I'm not saying cause I'm amazing. I'm like, this community is amazing. And it's so fun to watch us all grow and grow and grow and grow together. I said, you will feel so supported and you will feel like, oh, wow, this isn't just me. We're all going through life. And it's so fun to recognize, to recognize that I'm not going to sing, Gary. It's so fun to recognize that it's not just me. It's not just me that's going through this. It's all of us. And it's fun to watch others and me and others and to be encouraged to speak. And it's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Feely, feely. In order to change for the positive, we have to be vulnerable and honest so that we can grow. Yes. And feely, I'm going to say a different word because I sometimes have a trigger against the word positive because sometimes people miscategorize it. In order to change for the empowered, to be empowered, to be empowered, you have to be vulnerable and honest and true and authentic. And that leads to, to growth, to growth. Love it. Love it. Love it. Vishali, so how can I attract the kind of person that I want? I feel like even my past relationships were never the ones I wanted. Now I know I don't want to settle for anything, but I haven't met someone in a long time that's close to what I want. Okay, that's exactly like the Neil question. It's no different. But now instead of money, financial freedom, we're talking about love. I love that we're going through them all. We haven't really talked about worthiness indirectly, not directly. Did we talk about worthiness? We never talk about worthiness. Anyway, Michelle, what is it that you want? Everybody, let's list together whether you have it, had it, or desire it. Okay, Lisa's coming in onto that one. Let's list it together. What does a good relationship feel like? Okay, I'm going to start. Oh, inspiration on worthiness. Okay, Valerie, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's start this. Oh, it feels like connected, supported, understood, seen, to be free from one, to be free, to be free, to be free, to be free. Worthiness, okay, I got, I guys triggered you guys with the worthiness. Like fishing? Oh my goodness, Steve. Like fishing. They like fishing. Love fishing. Huh? Why like? Love fishing. Vishal, a good friendship and where I don't have to explain myself. Okay, understood. Understood. Love fishing. Steve loves fishing. Steve, I enjoy fishing sometimes too, Steve. It has to be the right conditions. It has to be, I don't like being from the pier. It's got to be it doesn't have to be in the boat too, but it's got to be beautiful ambiance. Like if I'm going to go fishing, take me somewhere that is beautiful ambiance. Don't take me to transmission lines. Don't take me to a pier. Don't take me where there's cars anywhere. It's got to be in the middle of the wood. Anyway, I'm totally on a different tangent. How did you take me there? Okay, let's go back to relationships. Self-worth, says Lucy, and vulnerable. And vulnerability, what does vulnerability? Let's mean, well, let's define everybody what vulnerability means cared for beautiful care i can care and i am cared for happy joyful respected and healthy beautiful beautiful understood seen 
like the kind of bond we have with our siblings. I want someone who cares for me like that, like our parents do, without having the fear, okay? Without the fear of being too needy. So, Vishali, you're starting to give yourself clues, clues of where and why you're attracting somebody. It's probably controlling or disregarding or not respecting you and love you. I'm starting to get the clues. So there's a uh, a fear, you called it fear, of, uh, of being too needy. So you're, you're, it's worthiness that's also coming out. Insecurity is a bit that's coming out. Secure, Steve just said secure, an insecurity. So you wanna be secure. <gasps> Oh my God, anybody that's in relationship with me, not from a place of vain vanity, because this is sounding really vain. <laughs> it's sounding really vain. Okay, you guys, let's reset. Okay, rewind and reset. Truly feel, I'm, I'm crying laughing now. I don't know if I can do this. Um, just, I, I am an amazing person and I know the core of my being is about love and care and I love loving and seeing the beauty in people and giving from from full and I want a relationship that is so secure too and gives to me from full and just connected and is steve yeah like you know where someone is they just are and am and i just want to feel aligned seen understood i want to i want them to mirror my sense of self-worth and free i want us to be free together and free together free and I want us just to laugh and to have fun and to play and to travel and to be to is to is to is together just want to love freely I want to love freely and I want to be loved freely I want my self-worth to be through me I know I'm worthy I know I'm good I know I'm pure, and that relationship amplifies, amplifies for each other, amplifies. Mo sounds damn good to me, and Valerie, I love how you always say someone who wants to amplify our lives. I'll tell you why, Valerie. I will tell you why. Lisa likes this too. Fantastic. I'll tell you why. Early on in my spiritual journey, I say that with a bit of, you guys heard my sarcasm. What did we say? The biting of flesh of dogs, or the do and I don't usually use sarcasm. Every now and then you guys see my cynicism because I've always been on my spiritual journey since the day I was born. But then there was a phase there that I was exposed to stuff and I started on there. But in there, there was a lot of like uh, distorted spirituality and distorted judgment and distorted growth and there was a lot of blame and shame in there and I thought there was like oh I'm growing but there was a lot of blame and great and, and, and shame in there but the biggest teaching the biggest teaching was everything that you attract or everything that you have is within you so everything is within you so what I teach you guys and say okay everything's within you but Everything that happens in a relationship is about you and everything is about you. And I'm like, okay, guys, but if everything's about me, then why do I want to be in a relationship? If I'm supposed to be happy internally first, why do I want to be in a relationship? If everything that happens to me bad is because of me, not them, then why? If I'm easier to be happy alone than with them and they just, why? I'm like, why? And then one day I realized, oh, because it's fun to be with people, because it's fun to laugh with people, because it's fun to cry a bit with people, because it's fun to run with people, because it's fun to be, it's fun. So then I realized, oh, we're here to amplify, to amplify that I am responsible for everything I feel, I am. And together we, we raise each other, we raise each other. What was I listening to today? that was talking about the power of a group was more than the power of one. What was that? It will come to me. The power of the group was more powerful than the power of one. 
just wish I could remember what that was. Anyway, <laughs> as I digress in my own little mind, what was that? I can see it so clearly, but I can't pick it what it was. So yeah, there is so much. Why do we get a, go to a wedding and invite hundreds of our friends? Why do we want to have a party and invite all of our people? Why do we, in a funeral, invite all of our people? Because as humans, we amplify each other's experience. So yes, Valerie, that's where it came from. And so I had to have my aha moment, my inside moment of like, okay, if everything's about me, then why do I need people? If everything's about me, then why? And I'm like, oh, now I understand, I understand. Good, Valerie, good. Sporty Jen, trusting what you want is obtainable. Self-worthiness, yes, back to fear of failure. There we go. It's so fun how we just keep coming in. Ashley, I'm jumping in so, 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 so late, but I'm here. Fantastic, Ashley. Steve, so many people are damaged and wounded. No clue, clues, no clue, clues, no tools. I think there are a lot of them narcissists around. I don't know. Yeah, Steve, there are. But when we move to a lens of everybody, like, let's not, today I listened a couple times because I record these things and I'm like, oh, they're good. And then I put them out and then I become insecure. And then I listen to them. I'm like, oh no, they're good. Like, it's so funny to watch me during my my journey of, of, of creativity and putting it out there and then having it available and then being it received. It's really fun. Fun and funny. But anyway, I was listening a couple times to the Earth School one to see how does it feel as a recipient of it because it's different lenses when you're creating versus doing versus listening. And in it, it says, don't judge others. We're all here for a purpose. And it might look like some people have the big end of the stick and some people look like they have the short end of the stick. I forgot to take my elastic off and I'm like, I've been wearing this around my wrist the whole time. Anyway, as I digress. <laughs> Oh my god oh my god um don't judge don't judge don't judge why people are narcissists they're here to do a role for us those narcissists are here to teach us wouldn't be so who would want to pick to pay the role of a narcissist okay so we all watch tv we talk about netflix some more than others that's not a judgment it's just was a comment and in those Netflix series, you have some people that are the criminals and some people that are superheroes and some people that are the um, the main characters and some people that are sub characters and some people have major roles. Everybody has to, everybody plays their role. In life, everybody's got their role. So let's not judge because everybody's here for a purpose and we just don't understand why. Yeah? 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 Oh my goodness. And just T, Namaste, Manel, and all the others here. Hello, beautiful. Okay, Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia. Okay, Steve says natural to habitate. Natural to habitate. Steve, not with you on there. Cynthia, I sense by using the word just in front of anything is invalidating. Oh my God, Cynthia, you must be in my business meetings. When I walk into a meeting and they're like, oh, it's just Manel, I'm like, uh uh, nobody can ever put the word just in front of my name. <laughs> if you want to put just in front of yours, you go ahead for it. And so it's fo so funny because just is really such a small invalidating word. It's just four characters, but it does so much invalidate. Uh-uh. Oh, it's just, no, it's not just me. It is me. It is me. I'm with you, Cynthia. Why are you saying this though? And value of the idea being expressed. I just want cause. Can we say I have cause now? and offer the truth to our mind and heart. Yes, but where did this come from? I see by using the word just in front of anything, it's invalidating the total width and value of the idea being expressed. I agree. I just want cause. Yes, I can we just say I have cause now and offer the truth to our mind and heart? Yes, absolutely, but I don't know where it's coming from. Did I say just or did someone say, tell me where this is coming from, but I am so with you on that. So with you, Cynthia, autocorrect not cause X, Y, Z. Okay, that helped me too. I wish I saw that earlier. Yes, I agree with you, Cynthia. I do, but where did it come from? Did I say something just? Um, bum, 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 bum. Valerie loves it. Lisa, can can spot them quicker now and leave before they get hooks in to use fishing metaphor. Fantastic. And that's why I was telling you that I was celebrating my girlfriend. You got out before you got a hook. You were aware before it started. That means you're growing and that means you're getting out of the cycle. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> oh goodness, Gary. Hi, Just Manel, first timer. 
<laughs> just to know, I'm telling you. Lisa, I like what Manel said before about who would want to be a narcissist and giving a choice. Who would want to be? Some of the characters that are in my life, I'm like, oh my God, I am so glad that you signed up for this one and I got my role because I got the better end of the stick. Better end of the stick. But if we believe we come into this human experience, all of us, for something bigger than we realize, maybe those narcissists are our friends. Maybe they're taking on the harder role. Maybe they're the ones that are not learning how to tie their shoelace, shoelace and, and they're getting that failure for much longer than we are. They are maybe the stronger characters. Let's not judge them. Let, I love the term non-judgmental justice. So it's non-judgmental awareness, non-judgmental seeing, non-judgmental is like, okay, this isn't the, 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 the relationship for me and it's okay. It's okay, but from non judgment because if you're judging them you are judging yourself yes Rachel I came to the realization that most people are self-absorbed it takes effort to really consider others and even more effort to do something about it to care yeah Rachel I think that has to do with the pain and the resistance and the fear and when people are not willing to go inside they're looking outside and they're looking at the lens of how people are judging them and so it really has to do with the, and, and the other thing is the more you're pure, the more you're going to really attract pure people in your life. Like it's so interesting, my circle of people and then how I keep meeting like more, like the people that I like, it's like you do attract what you are. Some of the people that are coming to my life is like, oh my God, you are just amazing. You are just so pure. So yes, I agree with you. And it's just part of that being unaware to aware, unaware to aware. And what we want is to make that path from unaware to aware, all non-judgmental. No matter what, even if you are aware and everybody is still unaware, it's non-judgmental. We were unaware one day. Would we have wanted everybody to be judging us because we were still unaware? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's part of the compassion. And if we can have compassion for others, then we have compassion for ourselves. Do you guys see the continued thesis, 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 especially in first timers? Compassion is the name of the game. It's so funny because I say that about everything, isn't it? Liberty is the name of the game. Surrender is the name of the game. Compassion is the name of the game. But they're all synonyms, but they're all synonyms for one. Lisa, working on not taking stuff personally. Fantastic. Fantastic. Or how about this, Lisa? Because you know how much I really like to position things in the right way. Aware that nothing is personal. And aware of the emotional reactions and expressions of feeling something personally and aware that I'm building my muscle to not take life personally and aware of how amazing people is and amazing of how aware of how I am amazing and aware of the beauty in this world and aware of the beauty in life. <sighs> wow. 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 Lisa, you like that one? Fantastic. Okay, Cynthia, I've been hearing just, just, just today. The word just just so annoys me. Bruce used to always, I could say, because he has not been in the, my work life for so long and the odds of him hearing this and anybody being able to figure out which Bruce it was, it would be very difficult. Bruce used to say, it's just Manel. Like, what? <laughs> what planet are you from to put just, just Manel? Oh. <laughs> and so I would joke, I would joke. And so they, he, he would always still say just Manel with a twinkle in his eye. He'd say, it's just Manel, wink, wink. And so anyway, it, it, we had fun. You did say it, and that's not what I brought it up. I hear it from many others as well. I did not use that word as it was pointing out to me that it was, yeah, it is very invalidating. Um, so yeah, I just, I just don't like it too. And I don't like the word but, oh, the word but too. The but is more very agree with you, but not. It's like, whoa, that's really disempowering. So I like that. So yeah, I like that. Rachel, non-judgmental, beautiful Lisa. We talked about that. Gary, Gary, you probably just said just as well. You probably did. Okay, how's everybody feeling? 
Are we ready to manifest the lives that we want? Are we realizing, are we ready to realize that it's all in our hands to curate the life that we desire? Are we ready to recognize that we are going to do it from a place of strength and empowerment and focus and direction and power that we have the capacity? Are we ready to let go of all judgment and have unconditional compassion to the resistant journey that we may be on and we're working to decrease the amplitude and the frequency so we can calibrate to unconditional worthiness, freedom, and love. Who's in? <laughs> Who's in? I saw the hearts going there. Who is in? Who's in? I don't see that enough are in. I'm going to take it personally. <laughs> Gary says, maybe and Cecilia gives beautiful hearts. Grace Yoga, I'm ready to put on that lens. Grace Yoga, I am so happy for you too. Okay, hold on, you guys are saying, okay, let's see. Uh, Andrea, ready, set, go, beautiful. Steve is in, and Lucy, I am so be beautiful. Gary, for sure, Michelle, yes. Lisa, all in, Monica, me. Monica with the, uh, is that a, a sea urchin or something. Angela is in. Sporty Jen is still smiling. Lucy is in and Rachel is in and Angie is me. Beautiful. Lucy, I'm so, oh, you're telling me I'm so in. Monica, beautiful Monica is also in with her and her past. I think that's your past spouse, your beautiful ex, uh, uh, um, uh, your beautiful husband that has passed. Monica, is that what it is? Is that that picture of you and um, Pamela, I'm but in, but I missed what I volunteered for. <laughs> Pamela, you're taking out the trash today. <laughs> I just asked who wants to take out my trash and recycle on Monday nights because Yusuf doesn't enjoy doing it. <laughs> Monica says, yes, it's us. Well, you're both beautiful. You are beautiful. Uh, uh, and Mo, I think we got some laughter. Um, Vishali, ask away, ask away, ask away. And Monica, I was going to call you out if you were in or out because the other Monica said, and I said, well, okay, there's two Monicas here. Are you in? Ah, uh, Vashali, Vashali, Vashali. How can we start working on our self-worth? Okay, Vashali, Valerie has the answer for us. <laughs> oh my God, Valerie, that's perfect. That came out as a rectangle, so I don't know. Okay, first of all, Vashali starts with awareness. Every answer is gonna be the same thing. It starts with awareness. And so now you're aware Instead of us blaming, oh, our relationships blow um, or, or, or whatever it might be that you might be blaming external to you, we start to have an awareness of like, oh, game on. There's something within me that conditioned me to see myself less than. Maybe it's because I'm a woman. Maybe it's cultural, maybe it's societal, maybe it's the ranking in my family, maybe, 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 there could be a million. And those reasons are listed as non-judgmentally. It's not, oh, woe is me, it's not my family is terrible, it's not the culture is bad, it's not earth and society is terrible, it's not being a woman is X, Y, and Z. It's all from a place of exploration, awareness, scientific you guys can see the magnifying glass. Scientific exploration. It's like, oh, interesting. I come from a lineage and a, a culture and a society where I have picked up the feeling that I am unworthy because of X, Y, and Z. Oh, interesting. Oh, this is natural conditioning. Huh, we're all on this journey. Oh, I can see it in all the greats. Even Oprah's talked about it for so long, about body image and accepting herself. And Oprah was a big teacher for teaching us to go in. Ah, that's what she's talking about. Hmm. I'm acting, you guys. How's my acting? <laughs> oh, 
I, my worthiness. Okay, now I'm going to choose, choose, choose to calibrate to my strength, to my worthiness. And I recognize and will recognize everything that happens externally is helping me to understand and calibrate internally till I get to a higher sense of self-worth. I'm going to acknowledge my unconditional worthiness and I'm going to intellectualize it and keep intellectualizing it and allow the time that's best for my highest good for me to shift emotionally until I have an awareness that I, and a full body alignment of my full worthiness. Vashali, does that answer? Does that answer? It's the muscling, it's the journey, and it starts intellectually, and you might play with it uh, egoically, and you got to realize, oh, what is it that made me feel that I wasn't worthy? Oh, because I'm a female. Oh, this has been going on for generations and generations and generations. Oh, but right now, there's no difference between male and female, or actually any gender, anything, any way we identify about we're all equal. Mm, yes, now I know it spiritually and egoically, but I still don't feel it. Okay. What does that resistance feel like? Ooh, it feels like shame. Mm, feels like anger. Ooh, there's frustration. Oh, there's sadness. Ooh, there's deep sadness. Wow, I didn't realize how sad I was that I felt repressed my whole life. Nobody's going to get me to sing today. <laughs> if I had a song, how come I'm not singing? Gary, I will try to sing. I don't know. I just can't force myself to sing. Oh my God, there's the shift. I start to feel a shift. I woke up today feeling alive and feeling worthy. Oh my God, I feel like that person acknowledged me different than they did. Was that them that shifted or me that shift? Oh my God, I feel amazing. I'm dancing in the rain. <laughs> Gary, I'm just not into singing today. I tried, I really tried. Mashali, did I answer your question? Did I answer your question? And I couldn't even break into dancing in the rain. I really <laughs> Fantastic, Bishali. It's your journey. It's your journey. It's your journey. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Brooke, I find that either I'm irritated or worried. I have contentment periodically, but my ego keeps worrying about non-truths or irritations at others than myself. Brooke, it's the same journey that I just told Vishali about self-worth. And ask me, like, ask yourself, you can ask me too, why are you irritated and worried? What are you irritated and worried about? There's something deeper in there, singing in the rain. <laughs> just, today, there's just, I don't know if it's allergies or something. Brooke, no control. There we go. Get to the root of it. Fear, I have no control. And where do you not have control? Control's a big one. Control's a big one. Where do you have no control in life? Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> Oh my God, sometimes I crack myself up, you guys. Perfect, perfect. I need some arrhythmics. I would love some arrhythmics. Yeah, everything but me. Fantastic, 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 Brooke. Go to the root of it. Go to the root of it. Your irritation and worry is about something much bigger. Go to the word of it. And like, oh, I have no control. Guess what? Never did and I never will. I never did and I will. It is an illusion. It's an illusion. It's an illusion. So intellectualize that. And you know what we really have, Brooke? Valerie, tell her what we really have. Angie, what did it, what, never about what? What did I ask that you're saying never? Sing, never sing? Singing in the rain? Oh my goodness. Valerie, I feel like that, Brooke. Maybe an irritation on control again. Never control, never control. There we go, there we go. So what do we have? What? Brooke, I get it, but don't want it, maybe. It's familiar. What You don't want what? It, what do we have? We have trust. We have acceptance. We have alignment. We do have choice. We do have choice. We have our inner power. We have infinite and unconditional control over our worthiness, our freedom, and our love. We have our choice to surrender. <laughs> Gary, Gary is on a, he's just on a roll. Brooke, cry it out. We do a lot of that here. <laughs> You're killing me. 
me. Lisa, yes, fear. Love, because fear, loss of control. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, let it, yes, I cried earlier. You guys, if you cry, you have to let us know. It's just not fair for me to do all the singing, laughing and crying without me knowing when you cried. Oh, A Angie, I was just starting to write trust. Yes, trust. Vishali, I did too. You guys, you have to come clean, Gary, too. <laughs> You guys, I didn't really say anything to make anybody cry today. I did have a couple of moments of goosebumps. Cried out. <laughs> Audrey, cried out. <laughs> Brooke, my stepdad is dying. Beautiful. Be Brooke is going to bring us all to tears. Brooke, beautiful. Yes, you have no control and your stepdad will die. He will die and you will die and we all will die. And that's part of the beautiful part and the most difficult part. And I'm crying now too, of our human journey is, is the surrender to what we can't control, which is life and death. And I have that in one of the meditations that are coming out as well. And it's, it's the journey. It's the journey, Brooke. It's the journey, but the biggest awareness for you is to let go of the irritability and the worry and to recognize that you're fearful of death. The biggest justice you can go to yourself is instead of believing it's this, the pee under your bed, it's the fact that you don't know if you're a princess or not. You guys, did you like that? That was really good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Mo, love it. So instead of us worrying about the P, it's not the P. It's not the worry. It's not the anxiety that we don't talk about here. It's not the but. It's not the P. It's am I a princess? Am I a princess? You'll only know if you feel the P. But it's not the P. It's not the P. Beautiful. Beautiful. Angie, my trousers are full of anxiety until my dad dies. Beautiful, beautiful. But Angie, my trousers are full of anxiety until my dad dies. And then what happens? I know that's a saying that you're saying that's really deep. Beautiful, beautiful. So guys, I'm gonna break it to you. I don't care what gender you are and I hope this is okay what I'm saying. We're all princesses. We're all princesses. Stop looking for the P. Stop, no, no. Stop blaming the P. Blaming the P. We're all princesses. And let's start to see the P. And <laughs> the analogy is going way off. Let's recognize that we are the princess. We're all the princess. We're all the princess. <laughs> Sporty Jen, you remember the princess and the pea that she went and the only way that she could tell if she was a princess or not, if she slept on a bud full of layers and layers and layers of mattresses, and if she knew, could, didn't sleep well because there was a pea at the bottom of the, um, of the mattresses, only if she got it, then would she know? Pamela, hilarious, I use that analogy on my daughter a lot. Yes, yes, yes. Lisa, yes, don't need a prince to save me, but won't want to enjoy life. Gosh, you're beautiful. We're all amazing. Let's have amazing people to have fun with. Let's have fun. <laughs> Gary, I'm a pretty ugly princess. I win. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So let's not doubt it anymore. We are the princess. And when we feel the pee, it's not, it's, the, it's not about whether or not she felt the pee. It's whether or not she believed and knew she was a princess. But it wasn't her that she was doubting the princess. I think it's the person that let her sleep in her house wanted to see if she was being honest or not. So the story is a bit distorted, but you guys all get what I'm saying. You are a beautiful princess, Mishali. You are a beautiful princess. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. How does everybody feel? How does everybody feel? Brooke, how are you feeling more in control? Isn't that ironic that you recognize that you're out of control? I tell you, you have no control to trust and surrender. Then I ask you if you feel, if you're more in control. Brooke, be, honor your sad, honor your sad, honor the end of your stepdad's life. See the beauty in it. One of my neighbors, her husband passed, I don't know how many years ago, five years ago. 
and they were a love story. And when I went into that house, as the days that he was dying, it was the most beautiful, grounded, amazing energy that I have felt in my life. And they're very spiritual, particular. Both of them are very spiritual, and they were amazing people. And they're that even though it was very painful, obviously he was dying of cancer. The energy in that household was beautiful, 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 beautiful. Honor the process of him going through what he's going through. There's another family that went through and it was a beautiful journey of, of honoring his life while you had the time because you knew he was dying. And honor your sadness, honor your mourning. I think I have a few meditations, a talk and a meditation about the honoring your mourning and your grieving, your grieving process. Allow yourself to be in the sad, allow yourself and, 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 and honor, honor, this is the, the witnessing of the beauty of life and death and say that the beauty of life and death and the cycle of life. Does that resonate, Brooke? Does that resonate? When I spoke him today in the hospital, and mine's not right, COPD and lung cancer. Well, I send love to you, Brooke, and I send love to him and all of your family and everybody. At least I did that with my dad. Hurt but beautiful. Beautiful. Brooke, much love. Good. Very good. Angie, uh, Angie, Angie, am I saying, can you tell me how to say your name? Um, can you write it in the window how I say your name with phonetically? Angie, is it Angie? Brooke, sending you love. We're all sending you love. Andrea, I'm a silly deep princess that's going to travel and leave her house. Hospice were angels. Fantastic. Make it a beautiful time and honor the sadness in it. I'm not telling you to go out there and have a party, but honor the beauty of the transition and try to see the beauty in life and death. The mystery of it. The mystery of it. Brooke, yes? Does that resonate, Brooke? Does that, does that open the compassion, the love to the process? Pamela, my friend lost his dad yesterday and it's tough. He never lost someone else close before, so I could only imagine what he's going through. Angie, and it helps me to come out of my pre priestess of my soul. Beautiful. Parasis of my soul. Beautiful. Beautiful. We, it looks like in January we should do something on death. Again. Again. Death. Again. Again. At least I make myself laugh. I don't know. I I do. <laughs> okay, guys. So so on Monday at nine a.m. we're gonna talk my time, my time, Raleigh time, Eastern time. We Monday, Monday. We're gonna have talk about not enough time. Then I don't have anything scheduled. I will before Monday, and I know I said that before. Sometimes I'm a procrastinator, you guys. I try not to label myself that way, but sometimes I do. I'll label into the future by Monday. So we'll start to see when the next one will be. I'll be taking a couple of weeks off as I head to see family for the holidays. I have just released 10, but by tomorrow another 15. I think about 30 meditations and talks that will come during the holiday season to fill in the gap. Attaining your authentic life. Join it and keep the conversation going. And we're here, we're all here to support each other during the holidays. Angie, it's like confronting yourself to look into the tiger face. Yes, yes, yes. Pamela, I love that it's only the acceptance of death that frees us. Me too, me too, Pamela, me too, me too, me too. Andrea and laughter too. Lisa, accept comfort and take, yes, accept comfort and care to make it through, yes. Accept leaning into your people. Yes, yes, yes. Andrea, you are amazing and so love. Brooke, thanks, Manel, you're always helpful. Brooke, you are beautiful, you're beautiful. Gary, your new superhero name is Manel the Resonator. <laughs> Manel the Resonator. Oh my God, Monica, this was my first time with and it's amazing, thank you. Monica, welcome, uh, welcome, welcome. It's not the other Monica's first time. I don't know how many times the Monica, the other, now we have to differentiate. What's the last initial of each of you? And, and Monica, 
Is that a C amoeba? I, it's a very small picture. Thanks, H, Monica H. What is that beside your picture? Because I would refer to you by that emoji. Um, I would refer to you by that. It looks like a, a sea urchin. It's a tree. <laughs> I'm looking into the camera in such a funny way. I can't see the tree. Okay. I can't, I don't know. It's, it looks like I'll, I'll try to see if I can see it later. It's super small on my screen. Okay. Um, you all feel like a fabulous family. You are, I feel so blessed. We are a fabulous family. We are putting our through. Everybody's asked, how do you do it? You do it by supporting yourself with love and, and, and empowerment and, 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 focus and desire and acting and by acting I'm going to create and curate the life that I desire and we will all do that I am Monica's you guys do you know how my my brain works G and H are much too close in the alphabetical order for me to remember who's G and H <laughs> oh my god Monica G and Monica H these two letters are too close to each other my brain is like very analytic. Oh my God, so happy, Monica. It's, it's so funny, Monica. Um, I, I, Monica G and Monica H. Okay, I'll try my best. Tree is T-H-E, the. Anyway, I'll figure out my own game to remember. Four times, yes, I remember seeing you several times. Well, it's wonderful. Uh, Lisa, it's a Rosser rock. What? Are, oh, what, oh, the type of tree it is. Oh my God. Um, okay. Monica, I'm so happy to be here with you, Manel and everyone. Me too. You too. Yeah. Gary was on a roll mo, and everybody's laughing. The G and the H. Oh boy. You can call me Monica. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Um, oh, um, I'm Monica H. <laughs> Oh boy, Mo, I'm dying. I am dying. I am just dying. Okay, Gary, yes, G would be hard for me to remember too, right? G uh, Gary, <laughs> Gary, stop. Gary, stop. I can't. And Christine and Christine, you guys messed me up too, but I love that Christine, the other Christine has a capital T, but you guys missed me up in the beginning. I'm like, did Christine change your profile? And Neil, Neil, I don't know if Neil's still there, but there was two Neils. I'm like, Neil, did you change your profile pic? And it was a different Neil. And I'm like, oh, you're not my, you're not the regular Neil. You're the other Neil. Okay, Christine, all the way through while I'm working. Fantastic. I hope it made you more efficient. The Monicas are taking over. The Monicas are taking over. M's, the M's. There is power in the M. The M. The M. Oh my goodness. Um. The sporty gen, the more we do these inspirations, the more we get unconditioned by past behaviors. Welcome all. It's an amazing group when we have discovered how much we love to laugh and sing and sing. <laughs> sporty gen. Did Gary put you up to that? Now you know why I'm sporty in front of my name. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yes, and you remember the real story, the Neil story, and I was trying to be really coy about it. I'm like, um, did you change your picture? And he said, yeah, I just changed it. He didn't know what I was talking about. And, and then finally, I'm like, have you been here before or not? <laughs> Do I know you or not? Are you a new Neil? Are you the old Neil? Just tell me. It should be so hard. Okay, you guys are all fantastic. I love you all. We will see you on Monday. Come to Attaining Your Authentic Life. Give me like feedback on the meditations and inspirations and stuff. Let me know what you think. Let me know where I can grow. Let me know what you want. Mo, love you back. Mo, Mo, Mo. Heidi running to a Zoom meeting. My love and blessings to everybody. My love and blessings. Thanks everyone for the laugh. Thank you all for the laugh. Okay, everybody. I love you. My love. Uh, I've, uh, uh, my love. <laughs> so, let's start again. Because uh, I, I read. It's it's because I'm multitasking. Laughter is the best medicine for all. It's 40 Jen, you're killing me. Still laughing so hard. I'm so happy. <laughs> Gary, Monica, scare me. So many Monicas. So many Monicas. At least there's only one Gary. <laughs> Elena, thank you so much. Thank you. Angie, you didn't tell me how to say um how to say your name phonetically. Angie? Angie? Am I saying it right? Angie? 
I'm used to having more vowels, even though in the Arabic script, they don't have a vowel like they do in English. So if there's not an extra vowel, I don't know what to do with it. Jen, thank goodness for only one Gary and only one Steve. <laughs> there's been other Steves at times. Oh my goodness, Ashlyn, love you all and take a worth. Um, oh my goodness, don't worry for pronunciation. Okay, okay, next time, tell me, next one. I like to, I like to pronounce properly. I do, I do. Okay, beautifuls, I love you all, my love always. And don't forget to go to my website, sign up for my newsletters and follow me, Instagram, Facebook, Insight Timer, and YouTube.